Hi there. What do you think beauty is? Do you think it's a model's face, a flower in nature, or a big scary monster? If you search on Google what the definition of beauty is, it will tell you a combination of qualities such as shape, color, or form that please the aesthetic senses, especially the sight. It will also tell you that the definition is a beautiful woman. These definitions may be true to our modern day society, but the definition may differ depending on what time period, culture, or personal preferences you have. If a person from the 16th century was to see how time has changed and how we dress now, they would most likely tremble. Did you know that a few hundred years ago, being thick, or in other words, fat, was a sign of wealth, and if you were skinny, you were perceived as poor? Well, these things are true. Beauty can be defined as so many things. We all make opinions all the time, whether it be between if we like Skittles or M&Ms, or how we think of somebody. Studies have shown that beautiful girls slash women receive four times the amount of text messages than an ugly girl. This happens because people form opinions about people. And also, girls slash women, beautiful girls slash women, receive 25 times more text messages than an average girl slash woman. This also happens because people form opinions about beautiful people being better and therefore not giving anyone else a chance. A way that you can find the best in people is by simply giving them a chance. I wonder how many friendships could have been made if people would just give others a chance. Take this childhood favorite story for example, Beauty and the Beast. This wonderful story is about a prince named Adam. Adam only cares for beautiful people because of this, Adam is unwelcoming to anyone who is anything less than beautiful. Then one day, a wrinkly and rather unattractive maiden comes in and asks for shelter in return for a rose. He turned her away just because she is wrinkly and old and does not have a beautiful face. After the old woman gave, gives a few attempts to convince Prince Adam to not be deceived by looks, he still turns her away. Soon after that, the old woman turns into a beautiful lady and also turns Prince Adam into a beast because he did not show empathy and love for her. Year after year, Adam, now the beast, stayed in his castle until the beautiful girl came along. After she met, had met the beast, she was frightened. But when she started to give him a chance, that is when they formed a true friendship. This friendship became a long-lasting one, and they got married. This is just a children's story, yet it has such a powerful message. How is it that a children's book or children's movie can contain such a powerful message, but we can't seem to listen to the message? Day after day, people judge people by their faces, just like we would judge a book by its cover. Except people are not books. They are real living beings with emotions. And just like books, they have endless possibilities and endless personalities. OK, now I have a question. How does beauty make us feel? This question is mainly based off of which person you are in the situation. If you are the pretty girl, you are most likely going to be happy, or so most people think. Pretty people, as well as average looking people, become accustomed to their bodies eventually. So, if you're pretty, that most likely doesn't make you any happier than everyone else. In fact, according to my research, being pretty can also trigger being bullied. This is due to other girls who are insecure about themselves and who think if they bully the person who they feel inferior to, they will feel better. Then there is the other person in this situation, which is the average or ugly girl. They, just like any other person, adapts to their bodies. But that doesn't stop them from feeling insecure about themselves. In fact, as of 2011, 53% of 13-year-old girls are insecure about themselves, and that percentage increases 78% by 17. On top of that, 57% of girls don't tell their parents that they are insecure. Also, 54% of women age 18 to 40 are insecure about themselves. Men are unhappy too with their bodies, but only 33% of the time. On the note of insecurity, a lot of doubts we have about ourselves generate from social media and bullies. First, I'll tell you about bullying. Bullying is more directed towards young girls. Actually, in my own class a few months ago, we had a discussion about cyberbullying.
Within that discussion, we uncovered that almost 75% or three quarters of my class has witnessed or been affected by cyberbullies. May I add that most of the cases that my, of cyberbullying that my classmates have described had to do with girls getting bullied by their looks. Then there is real life bullying. A lot of people are affected by this, but as I said before, very few tell their parents. According to debate.org, judging and bullying can cause depression and low self-esteem. So if you're bullying someone, stop. I have some tips for you if you're being bullied. Tip number one, if you're being bullied, even if it's not about the way you look, always tell an adult. Tip number two, never give in to a bully. Tip number three, even if no one is bullying you, if you witness someone else being bullied, be an upstander. Now I want to tell you about social media. In the 2014 survey, a huge number of women, 64% to be exact, report that Facebook and Instagram make them feel bad about their bodies. Now, Facebook and Instagram aren't the only sites convicted of this problem. Social media engines such as Snapchat, Twitter, and YouTube are also involved with making people insecure. How this makes people feel insecure, you may ask? Well, it's that all these apps have one thing in common. It's that they all allow you to show yourself. When you show yourself, it can make people feel bad according to how you look. Social media and technology in general has created what beauty is supposed to be. TV and social media have defined beauty as tall, thin, light-skinned, and feminine figures. We have also been influenced by icons such as Kim Kardashian, Kylie Jenner, and women who advertise for Vogue or CoverGirl, or basically any fashion industry. We are also influenced by not just pop stars, but from friends and entire universe of strangers. It's fine to have these people around, but when we let their looks get the best of us is when we let ourselves be open to insecurity. As you can clearly tell, bullying, social media, and technology has really taken insecurity to a whole other level. Another reason people feel insecure is that for most people, including me, when you see a beautiful woman walking down the street, or a pretty model on the front cover of your favorite magazine, or maybe you see who you think is the prettiest girl in your grade or class, this will most likely make you feel inferior. Even though this makes us feel bad about ourselves, we shouldn't feel bad. We shouldn't feel bad because what we are comparing ourselves to are models and TV stars. Both models and TV stars are beautiful but aren't real. What I mean by this is that most models and TV stars have natural beauty, but that is not what you see on TV and magazines. What you see is cosmetics, skincare, hair styling, hair coloring, hair removal, nail salons, tanning salons, Photoshop, and plastic surgeries. Though these people are beautiful, naturally, we shouldn't compare ourselves to them. We shouldn't compare ourselves to them because, as Cameron Russell said, I won a genetic lottery and an a recipient of a legacy. She's saying this from the viewpoint of a model. She also said asking to be a model when you grow up is like wanting to win the Powerball. What these two things have to show me is that we shouldn't compare ourselves to others' natural beauty because natural beauty is a one in a million sort of thing. So it's almost impossible. On to my main question, is beauty really skin deep? This question is hard to answer because there are multiple answers. My first answer is yes, it is skin deep. Biologically and visually, it is skin deep. Biologically, it is skin deep because things such as babies, symmetry, and cute things like puppies, we are biologically made to adore. Beauty is also skin deep visually. This is because if you see a picture like this, you see a picture of a beautiful woman, we know she is beautiful because with our eyes we can tell that, this, that the person is beautiful. But as I said, we are trusting our eyes is give, are giving us the right information about this person. We can't just jump into a photo and talk with a woman to see if she is truly beautiful. What I mean by truly beautiful is that we don't know if she is beautiful on, and kind on the inside. We have to trust that our eyes are giving, aren't lying to us. This may seem like a cheesy thing someone might say, but it's entirely true. Being beautiful truly comes from the inside. Remember everything I just told you about beauty being skin deep? Well, I want you to take that information and forget it. Yes, that's right. I want you to forget it. I want you to take I want you to forget it because beauty on the inside is way more important than beauty than outside beauty. 
If you are the most beautiful person in the world, but are the most unpleasant, mean, and rude person in the world, I will not like you. Back to the first question I asked, which was, what is beauty? Beauty is not what Google said. It is not just a beautiful woman. Beauty is your own type of beautiful. It is being bold, brave, kind, fearless, unique, and so much more. Beauty is something that you cannot see that you can see, not just within someone's appearance, but also you can see within somebody's actions. Beauty is definitely not skin deep. Thank you for listening, and remember, beauty is not skin deep.